It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Following the infamous Panama Papers, and now we have the Paradise Papers, which are over 13 million documents leaked to the German Süddeutsche Zeitung. Among these documents, there are several revealing previously unknown business connections between President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and the Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, and the state-owned Russian companies. Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, responded to these allegations as such. There was disclosure. There is no impropriety. And if people draw a contrary conclusion, that's because the, paper has tw the papers have twisted the story. Now joining me to discuss all this is James S. Henry. He's a leading economist, attorney, and investigative journalist who has written extensively about global issues related to fraud and these kinds of revelations we are getting leaked to the press. Thanks for joining us, James. Thanks. Good to be with you. Now, James, along with the Panama Papers, these Paradise Papers unravels a litany of tax fraud from Apple computers to the Queen of England, rampant in corporate and private money uh, hiding and laundering. So what is your best estimate of the money that is hidden offshore and sometimes uh, onshore? Um, of these kinds of accounts and what it's costing the treasuries of um, various countries? Well, what we see in this latest leak, this is a kind of continuation, uh, chapter two of the Panama Papers. That was uh, April 2016. This, uh, in this case, most of the 70,000 or so uh, accounts that we have information on came from two jurisdictions, Bermuda and uh, the Cayman Islands. Uh, a lot of the attention is focused on Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross and the fact that he was using offshore companies to uh, basically make it hard to find out how much he owned in the shipping company that was doing a lot of business uh, with Russia and is still doing that kind of business. He's had extensive dealings with the Cayman Islands and offshore companies there, uh, none of which is necessarily illegal in the technical sense, but it certainly raises questions about whether a sitting U.S. cabinet member should have a stake in uh, the profitability of uh, the Russian economy. Uh, secondly, Jared Kushner appears to have received some investments by way of some of these same kinds of offshore company structures and Russian investors uh, you know, who are uh, looking at his real estate projects. We also have some investments that were uh, made in Facebook uh, and uh, tweet uh, Twitter by uh, some of the same Russian investors uh, who turned out to have been financed by people very close to Vladimir Putin. Uh, Jesse Drucker's piece today in the New York Times went into that. So uh, that's three of the stories that you know have come to light just far and so, so far, and there are many more. But I wanted to highlight a couple multinational companies that uh, stand out here. One is the Swiss giant trading company Glencore. I think the Australian tax uh, authorities are going to have some interesting questions for Glencore, also for Nike, about their uh, Bermuda Papers related uh, tax uh, dodging that's been going on in, in Australia, and also for uh, Packer, one of the billionaires in uh, Australia that's been you know, investing with the help of some of the offshore companies disclosed in this report. So a lot of shoes that have yet to drop, and I, I'm, I'm struck by how well the journalism communities uh, around the world are working together, really, to help reveal this. Globally speaking, we're talking about maybe $300 billion a year of lost corporate tax revenue to these kinds of structures, much of which comes from the pockets of developing countries, um, and maybe another 200 to $300 billion a year of lost tax revenue from the more than 25 to 30 trillion dollars of offshore private wealth that is uh, laundered through these offshore structures. So it's a huge uh, kind of wealth gap in the world economy. 
All right, uh, James, uh, setting aside the Wilbur Ross and uh, Jared Kushner's uh, involvement uh, and all of this and setting aside Russia Gate, and as you said, you know, these are businessmen, they have dealings and they are connected partly uh, to Russian companies associated with the government. We know all of that. Um, but the corporate tax fraud here is very, very uh, interesting. Give us a sense of, uh, you've outlined the scale of, you know, what might be lost in terms of tax revenue. Uh, but how are they going about doing this? What are the loopholes that allows them to do this? Well, one of the games they play is to transfer the ownership of uh, the uh, sort of exporting companies. In the, in the case of, let's say, Glencore's businesses in Zambia, they export copper from Zambia uh, to, uh, to an offshore entity in Cayman or BVI. It shows up uh, not as being exported to uh, China or wherever it's supposed to end up, but it's actually booked for tax purposes in an offshore company. And so uh, that haven where the revenues are booked uh, and the profits are booked uh, has a zero tax rate. So it helps to really radically reduce uh, the ultimate taxes that the corporate uh, parent pays on the sale of commodities. Another game that they play is to load up the operating companies in the developing world with, with debt and then pay interest to themselves uh, tax-free to offshore entities that are not really separate from the corporate pay, uh, 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 parent, uh, but that's called asset stripping and that's another widely uh, used practice. A third is to locate uh, the, the, the haven entities, uh, which under the international tax system as it exists now can be basically uh, recognized as separate from the corporate parent, even though they have no physical activity or reality at all, uh, in low tax places like Bermuda or the Caymans uh, or the Netherlands, for example. Uh, and then they take advantage of tax treaties that have been written to put real sharp restrictions on the level of taxation that can be imposed uh, by developing countries. So in all these ways, companies like Glencore and Nike can shift revenue and become uh, essentially citizens of nowhere for tax purposes. Now, I understand uh, Apple is uh, involved in this as well. Um, give us a sense of what they were up to since it's a corporation that all of us have to deal with in one way or another in any given day. Yeah, Apple's at an all-time peak in terms of stock market value and profitability. Uh, so it's not clear that they need uh, these tax dodges, but they've set up holding companies in places like Bermuda, the Netherlands and, uh, and Ireland in particular to essentially be, be citizens of nowhere for tax purposes on their offshore income. Uh, so they basically can transfer the ownership of their intellectual property, their, ass, their patents, their uh, you know, brands and trademarks to these offshore entities and then pay themselves royalties tax-free. And since in the uh, IT business that they're in, uh, royalties are a big share of value, you know, that radically reduces their global tax to less than 5% on their offshore income. Now, James, off the top, we showed a clip of Wilbur Ross defending himself, saying there was not, nothing wrong with what he had uh, actually uh, done. Um, will his defense hold up? Well, we're going to have to see to, you know, to what extent he actually declared these uh, ownership uh, interests with the Russians uh, before, you know, during his hearings. Uh, he may not have been transparent, but, you know, he's trying to use the standard apology for these kinds of offshore holdings, saying that they are technically legal. Uh, you know, when it comes to these things, we don't really know whether they're legal or not. There's so much secrecy involved. And secondly, the countries involved have such a stake in this kind of business model to helping uh, the world's elites uh, avoid taxes. Uh, that they don't have laws that sanction. Uh, in fact, that's the problem, that many of these practices uh, really may be legal. We need to change the law. Uh, so that, but at the moment, uh, you know, I think the burden of proof is on Ross to show that he complied with uh, the Senate's uh, uh, investigation when, they, when he sat before the committee and discussed uh, his offshore holdings and also 
I think we'll look a lot closer at the extent of these over the next few days and come back to you with some more information about whether he has really complied with the law. Right. Now, um, James, so when it was Swiss bank accounts that used to hide money for the ruling elite and the wealthy uh, where they would uh, put their monies in Swiss bank accounts that was not revealed, um, mm -hmm. uh, that was the tax haven. Uh, but with the, after a lot of pressure, particularly from the United States, the Swiss stopped doing that, and now this has gone offshore and into paradise, as uh, the papers say. Um, now, the, the governing uh, parties in these islands and uh, so on say that it's not their problem. It's really the problem of the countries where the people reside and or the companies reside that are, are trying to evade taxes. It's... Uh, they basically say it's your problem to deal with this um, and uh, and to rein it in. What's your response to that? Well, first of all, it's not true that Switzerland is not a big player in this. There's, they've just invented other ways to, uh, to, and you know, a lot of the money is actually ultimately ending up in first world countries like Switzerland, the United States, the UK. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you really want to hide money, you can put it in a Delaware company. There's no beneficial ownership registration. So this myth that the havens are all offshore, I think, is one of the, uh, the problems with these kinds of uh, stories. Um, but, you know, it, it is the case that uh, a, sort of a spider web of mainly British uh, uh, havens offshore, like the Caymans and Bermuda, Hong Kong and Singapore uh, have played a major role in this. Uh, but if you go back to the 1970s, you see a, you know, maybe 15 havens playing any kind of significant role. Today, it's more like 90. Uh, so this business has expanded dramatically. Uh, you know, the, the, the point about the problem being up to us to fix, well, I think the havens have a point. Uh, we really could close this uh, shady business down. It's enormously profitable to the big five or six accounting firms in the world, to many of the major banks, multinationals. Uh, the largest law firms are not sitting in the Cayman Islands. They're sitting in New York and uh, in London. Uh, so, you know, ultimately, I think uh, the first world does have a lot of responsibility. We've been making, making progress in the last decade. Uh, the Trump administration, un unfortunately, has shown signs of not wanting to continue the, the effort to clean up the offshore haven industry. In fact, they want their latest corporate tax bill is a kind of proposal to revitalize it by uh, essentially providing a kind of territorial income tax for the United States. Uh, so, you know, havens, I think, are artificial creations. Uh, First World has a lot of responsibility for them, far more than anybody else. All right, so James, if it was up to you, what should be done to fix this problem? Well, I think one thing we could safely do is to have much more transparency about who owns these offshore companies and trusts, who owns the onshore companies and trusts, so that we need beneficial ownership registration. Uh, we also need country by country reporting so we understand where multinationals are actually parking their profits without having to go through all these leaks. Uh, we could also use and a minimum agreement on fair corporate taxation across borders so we don't persist in having the kind of race to the bottom competition between uh, major countries in terms of tax rates. Uh, we need much fairer tax treaties for the stand, from the standpoint of developing countries. Uh, and we need much tougher uh, laws that punish banks, accounting firms, law firms that engage in this kind of financial chicanery. Uh, so, you know, that's a short list of things that we ought to get started on doing. Unfortunately, both parties in the United States, major political parties, uh, have kind of dropped the ball when it comes to cleaning up uh, this haven problem. So, so we have a kind of banality of exposés. This is the latest. We'll see if it leads anywhere. All right, James, I thank you so much for joining us today and hope we can have you back as this uh, situation unravels. Sure. Good to be with you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.